I think I was hit over 40 times. Can you briefly tell me where you were hit? In the head. In the face. This is security guard Megan Kraus. What happened? Telling an officer how a brutal on-the-job beating at Echo Glen Children's Center six months ago left her helpless. And I was screaming. Newly obtained surveillance video from inside the state-run youth detention center reveals just how powerless she was. It shows how the seven convicted teenagers accused of ambushing the guard, stealing her car, and breaking out in a carefully planned attack were completely running the show. In this video, police blurred the faces of three teens who were not charged as adults. Okay, well, let me get a head over to Echo Glen. It all started in May on the graveyard ship. Kids have escaped and assaulted a staff member. Krause, in the black shirt, was supervising teenagers with violent criminal backgrounds alone. Here she is going room by room to make sure the 14 inmates in her unit are accounted for and asleep. But she doesn't know there are two boys hiding behind her in the bathroom. And I hear feet running at me and he starts freaking pummeling me, just punch after punch after punch. One of her attackers heads to the common area to use a staff computer, which is completely unsecured with just the touch of a screen. He was letting all the kids out. He unlocks inmate cells and releases five more boys. As the boys come out, the other attacker drags her across the unit and he was just leading me with my arms. The inmates steal her belongings, her car keys, her cell phone, some change out of their clothes. And then the inmates forcefully shove and lock Kraus into one of their cells. Of course, at this point, I was crying because I was by myself. One of the inmates shouts through the cell window. He asked me what my, my passcode to my cell phone was. He's a convicted murderer who also escaped from Echo Glen the year before in nearly the same way. They stole a vehicle, they stole a phone, they assaulted the nurse to get those two items. After locking up the guard, the teens continue to wreak havoc. A second teen uses the computer that controls the locks of inmate cells. Then the convicted murderer uses a phone while the seven teenagers calmly walk out. And I'm banging on the window saying, help, help. No one would discover her for an hour. New details about what was going on. In October, we reported that Echo Glen leaders were tipped off about this escape, and they still left Krause working alone. It's just a messed up situation at Echo. Just kind of do an area check around where her car was taken. Record show King County law enforcement found the state did nothing to prevent it. Sheriff's office. And they identified more than a dozen security shortfalls with the facility, which is surrounded by wetlands instead of a fence. Echo Glen is managed by the Washington Department of Children, Youth and Families, or DCYF. In this after action report from the King County Sheriff's Office, police wrote Echo Glen staff are inappropriately comfortable with inmates, adding the teens were successful in escaping because they manipulated staff. They highlighted how that computer station, which two different teens used with ease, should have been password protected and locked behind a secure door. In emails, cops went on about their frustrations with Echo Glen, where escapes have been a problem for more than a decade. One Snoqualmie police officer wrote he continues to be amazed by the lack of security at the facility, that there is virtually no consequence for riots or escapes, and that instead of a correctional facility, the place is run like a summer camp. A King County captain also raised concerns that the repeated incidents are having a direct impact on the workload of first responders and ultimately the community. And a high-ranking chief at the sheriff's office chimed in too, noting he's seen years of inaction from Echo Glen, and it appears that will continue. There were serious procedural breakdowns that we should not miss. In this September interview, DCYF Secretary Ross Hunter acknowledged there were problems. I think the constructive response is, how do you cause this to not happen again? He said DCYF has made improvements to prevent future incidents, like hiring extra security, boosting pay, requiring staff to lock up personal property, and removing personal vehicles from the facility. The biggest challenge is the lack of physical security on the campus. DCYF says it's begun work on a multi-million dollar fence around Echo Glen, but that will take more than a year and a half to complete. I can only build things so fast. 911, what is the address of your emergency? Two weeks Ago. I'm calling from Echo Glen. Six months after Krause's attack, we have uh, three residents that escaped. Law enforcement responded to a call of yet another Echo Glen escape, this time involving three inmates who police said ran away while taking out the trash. Police helicopter video shows the urgent search for the inmates. 
He's in the woods. Two of the escapees were doing time for murder. A DCYF spokesperson says the boys were recovered quickly the same night, and they never made it off the property. No use of force. The department characterized the incident as a success, an escape attempt that was thwarted. They credited security improvements following the chaos last spring that left Kraus with a concussion and lingering trauma. In Snoqualmie, Taylor Muir from Rescue, King 5 News. And Megan Krause is still not back to work. A DCYF spokesperson says Echo Glen has increased security measures on computers that the inmates used to unlock the cells, but declined to comment on specifics, citing security reasons.